All right, number 15, uh, we have U, the universal set is 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 13, 15, 17, 18. And then we want to determine the complement. Okay, so complement uh, in this setting does not mean uh, I like your hair today or someone saying something good. Complement is actually going to be the opposite. Okay, so we have uh, this universal set. I'm going to draw it with a Venn diagram. So we, denor we normally denote universal set with a big box. And then we put this letter U. They might put it just outside or they might put it right inside. So this is our universal set. <clears throat> um, and we're going to determine the complement of the set 5, 7, 10, 15, 18. Okay, so I'm going to make this set. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it set A. Okay. So set A right here, and I'm going to put those numbers in here, 5, 7, 10, 15, and 18. Okay, so 5, 7, 10, 15, 18. Now, all of these are in U, but we're missing some. So the rest of those elements, I'm going to put them outside of this circle A, or this set A that I've created. So 3 is part of it. Five we already have. Seven we have. Uh, nine should be here. Uh, we already have ten. Uh, Thirteen should be here. Um, and then seventeen because we already have fifteen. So seventeen and eighteen. Okay. So <clears throat> complement is everything but this. So it's going to be the opposite. So if this is a universal set and these are all the numbers, let's make sure we got them all. 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 13, 15, 17, 18. Okay, so we have everything here. The complement is everything uh, that is in the universal set but not in this set. So everything but it's normally denoted like this. We'll say the complement of A. So the opposite. Everything except everything except A. Okay. Except set A. Let me do capital A. Or you can say the universal set minus a minus the, the things that are in A will give you A complement. Okay, so A complement or the complement is going to be just the stuff that's on the outside. So I'm shading the box, but I'm shading everything except for the circle A. So A complement, the complement of this set that we're looking for is going to be 3, 9, 13, and 17. All of those numbers in the shaded portion, not those. Okay, they already have my curly brackets for me. So we're going to do 3, 9, 13, 17. All right, and then number 16, this is the last one we'll see here. Um, a student has $1 bill, $10 bill, $5 bill, and a $20 bill. Um, part A. If the student must select at least one bill and the student may select up to all bills, how many different sums of money could the student make? Okay, a student has one dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, a five dollar bill, and a twenty dollar bill. And then it says if the student must select at least one bill and he may select up to all of the bills, how many different sums of money could he make? So, <clears throat> the number of possible different sums is asking for the number of subsets um, if at least one bill must be selected. So, this is what they mean. I'll try to give you a, a visual. So, we have, we have one, five, 10 and 20. Okay, 
So I'm going to uh, try to really quickly uh, write down all of the subsets of this set of four elements. So what we should have is there's four elements. To count the number of subsets, there's two to the fourth power. So there's two times two times two times two. That gives you 16. So there's going to be 16 subsets. I'm going to list them for you. And I'm going to show you uh, the number of possible different sums if at least one bill must be selected. So that means one, two, three, or all four. All right. So empty set. That means we're choosing nothing. Um, and this is the case that we're not going to be considering because we have to choose at least one bill. But it's going to be in the subset uh, part of me showing you 16. Okay, so we have the empty set. We have each element individual. So that'll be one, five, ten, and then um, twenty. Okay, so this is choosing one bill. Now we're going to do two bills. So we have one and five. We have 1 and 10. We're going to have 1 and 20. So these are all the pairs where 1 was the first bill chosen. Now we're going to start with the number 5. So we can choose 5 and 10. I'm going to add those up to get a sum. We can choose 5 and 20. Add those up and get a sum. Then we could choose. Uh, 10 and 20. Okay, so all of these are the possible selections of choosing two bills. Now we can choose three bills. So 1, 5, 10. 1, 5, 20. And again, uh, for this problem, you don't have to actually list all of these, but you need to be able to count and understand that we're going to do 16. We're going to take away one, the one. A scenario that doesn't have a bill and you'll end up with a uh, 15 for this question but I want you to see the visual so I'm going through all of this um, we've, we've started with 1, 5 and 10, 1, uh, 5 and 20 uh, 1, 10 and 20 okay so uh, that's uh, combinations of three we have a few more we can do uh, we can do 5, 10, and 20. And then I think we have one more. Uh, I don't think we can do any more combinations of 3. We have one more that's going to be choosing all four bills. So it's going to be 1, 5, 10, and 20. So let's count, shall we? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. So uh, 3 times 5 gives us 15 plus this 1 is 16 so there's 16 combinations we have to choose at least one bill so that's one or more so that would be all of these combinations here and that would give us 15 okay so for number one the number of different sums will be 15 will be 15 different amounts of money that we could come up with <clears throat> and then the number of possible different sums after removing the condition the student must select at least one bill so now we're getting rid of the case that he has to select at least one bill so that means it's possible for him to choose none so we're going to add this uh, this one back in so we'll end up with 16 so it's the same as choosing uh, the number of subsets and the number of proper subsets so now we're at 16 we have the the possibility to choose nothing